Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Jyotirmaya Yoga. We focus on spirituality, our journey to self-realization. Please subscribe for the mystical meanings of the scriptures and daily satsang. We are currently exploring the book, The Art of Positive Thinking by Worshipful Swami Jyotirmayananji Maharaj, narrated by Swami Nikhilananda. We are discussing the topic, Simple Living and High Thinking, and we will continue, Simplicity and Sublimity. Simple living arises out of an internal and integral development of the personality. Mental peace and contentment mean a great deal to one who has an interest in unfolding his deeper potential, who has an appreciation for spiritual values of life, and who knows that external possessions mean little. One who understands that spiritual values far surpass material objects tends to live a life of simplicity and sublime thoughts. In the very recent past, for example, Mahatma Gandhi lived such a life. Living as simply as possible was the theme of all his teachings. False simplicity. What is that? Simplicity should be the means to an end, not the end in itself. People go to extremes in the name of simplicity. Consider an aspirant in an ashram who has been wearing the same shirt for nine years. Whenever someone comes to see him, he says, I've been wearing this shirt for nine years. Isn't that amazing? Or he may have a little fan of palm leaves where most people would break it in a month or so. He has been holding on to it for five years. To many, that would seem to be an act of simplicity. However, the pride that develops and the involvement maintained in being simple is immense. All his energy is caught up in trying to appreciate and seek appreciation from others. To give another illustration, in a tr true incident from the past, an ascetic was invited to a king's palace during the reigning season. The king had arranged a comfortable bed so that he could have a good night's sleep. But being an inflexible ascetic, he wouldn't sleep unless a bed of straw was prepared. The king's servants had a hard time finding dry straw during the rainy season. It took hours. They started at 10 o'clock and it was not until 1 o'clock that they were able to find some straw for the ascetic to sleep upon. This is the practice of simplicity taken to an extreme a false simplicity that causes so many unnecessary complications for others. Absence of greed. On the other hand, true simplicity implies a deep insight into the yamas and niyamas, the restraints and observances taught in Raja Yoga, especially asteya, non-stealing, and aparigraha, non-covetousness. In the practice of asteya, you do not misappropriate any object or possession that belongs to someone else, especially by illegal or fraudulent methods. Further, you must try to avoid subtler forms of greed. For example, if you see someone else wearing a gold watch and feel, if only I had it. Mentally, you have taken something that did not belong to you. Craving the things that others have is a subtle form of stealing. Aparigraha is non-covetousness. That's a similar quality of not being greedy, but it focuses on the virtue of minimum possessions. If you are developing asteya, you do not possess things that do not belong to you. If you are developing aparigraha, you put a restriction on your possessions, even though legally and righteously you could possess many things. You don't possess things out of egoistic vanity. The goal before you as a practitioner of aparigraha is to see how little you can possess in this transient world. Why hold on to so many objects just to see them vanish before your eyes? Rather, possess as little as you need. 
This is contrary to the Western culture in which the individual tries to see how much he can possess and how elegantly he can live. In reality, all a person needs is enough to fulfill the purpose of existence, which is self-realization. Om Tat Sat. We will continue this journey in tomorrow's satsang.